Hello everyone, Nina here, and I am so excited for today's video, Seven Secrets to Create a Stunning Art Journal Page. In today's part one, I will share many different techniques to get a textured and interesting, fabulous background. So let's just begin. So the first layer to create is your background. I will use Art by Marlene washi tape to create four sections of my page so it will be easier for you to see the different look each technique gives you. The first layer is your first wash. The first technique that I'm gonna show today is create a background from watercolors. You simply are going to just spray water, pick your color and then dilute a little bit with water. With your brush just frame the area you want to color and keep coloring the inside until you're done with your whole area. I used wet on dry technique over here, but then I'm going to show you, I'll get a scrap of paper and I'm going to show you, look how beautiful it is. So this is the wet on wet technique. You start with just water on your brush, give it a first wash with just water and then dab your brush in the paint and then make these light strokes with your brush until you get this beautiful texture on the left and then the other technique is the wet on dry you see i blow the brush with the paint the paper is totally dry and i'm just painting all over the area that i want to paint look over here the difference this texture that you get on the left will only get it when the water is a lot and the paint is sort of floating on top of the paint when i bring the paper closer you're gonna see how the paint look how paint is moving floating on the water once it dries it will give you this beautiful texture it depends how you want your project to be so this is what we have this is our first technique second technique as you see in the list over here i thought the list will make it easier is the gel plate transfer when you are working with gel plate keep in mind that whatever you do on the gel plate is going to exactly transfer on the page so over here i put the stencil blended a little bit with my uh, ink blender and then did put the paper sorry here for the lighting and look it just did lift all whatever was on the gel plate you can use a stencil you can use your brayers whatever technique or whatever uh, end up result you're gonna have on your gel plate is gonna exactly be transferred on your paper the third technique is the smushing technique uh, you must have seen me do this a lot i just smush my uh, ink pads on top of my glass mat spray a little bit of water and then just smush my paper against all these inks and it gets this beautiful beautiful vibrant texture Look how nice it is. I also made sure that I do mask all the areas where I don't want the paint to go. For the fourth technique, we are going to use acrylic paint to create our background. You can apply your paint with just the way I'm doing over here with just a paintbrush or use a brayer. It gives this very vibrant look. So I am going to have this first wash. Look how different a result you get from each technique. I'm gonna safely remove my washi tape now. And let's move on to the next layer. Next, I would use stencils to apply more visual texture or even an actual texture to the background. I love these new 4x4 stencils that I got in my advent calendars. Also the longer ones that come in three as a pack and these bigger ones. I have a beautiful collection from Art by Marlene. So our first technique in stenciling is just simply ink blending. You're gonna place your stencil and you're just gonna use the ink blender to add few visual texture here and there. Look how beautiful. I love this technique the most. I would also recommend using a little darker color than the color of the background. So it is subtle and at the same time it will show. A second stenciling technique that I also love is using simply the baby wipe. Place your stencil and you're just lifting a little bit of the ink and look at the effect. It is the negative effect of the ink blending. So for the next one, I have this embossing paste and pearly looking 
embossing paste for some fun i'm gonna use this pearly looking and add my stencil and apply the embossing paste little bit by little bit here and there i did mask all around the area where i want to work with i also applied a little bit on my glass mat added a little bit of pink um, acrylic paint and then mix them together and here i get a different color so you can make your own colored embossing paste look how beautiful the texture is i really love it it is raised and it gives a beautiful interest to your background and gives a totally different look from the one where you ink blended and from the one that where you would lift the ink but they're still all amazing the next step is add your stamping i have these beautiful stamps some of them are rubber stamps some of them are clear stamps and i also have this set that i store in this very handy box that my kid 3d printed he sells these if you want comment below if you want me to give you the link so if you want to support him they're very handy and you can store the lid on top and you can store it at the bottom when you're when you want to open it and use it so you don't lose the lid anywhere this rubber stamp set is very versatile i cannot do any art journal page without it a lot of tiny cute little doodles here and there in your page amazing here is another secret have a plain paper from the same paper that you're using for your art journal a scrap of paper outside so you can stamp on it first so you can test how it looks like how it would look like on your actual paper so you don't ruin it i'm just dabbing the stamp on my ink pad testing it on the paper and then look how beautiful it is amazing i love the texture so much for this um, last one of the texture on the acrylic the embossing paste i have in mind a little village so i thought this beautiful stamp will create something very tribal and i will color it with the same colors of the focal point so i am going to add it with black and over here a little darker color and i would use to stamp add visual texture here and there on my pages look how beautiful everything looks just a little darker color than the color of the background and you got a new beautiful texture the next step i love adding acrylic accents with my fine tip acrylic markers in this section i'm going to use this butterfly so i bring it next to me and i bring the nearest colors from the acrylic paints that i have and i start coloring the doodles of the stamping that we did earlier to add these little beautiful colors that would match with my focal point i would also love to add uh, either with my gel uh, pen or with the white acrylic marker beautiful white accents here and there that will show the stamping that we did earlier and the stenciling it will give it a lot more interest not just blue on blue be creative um frame around the bubble color inside of a bubble look how beautiful it made such a difference and made it look so cute look how beautiful they're matching together we'll do the same thing for the rest these are the two focal points that i have in mind to add over here so again i'm getting the nearest acrylic colors and i'm going to add colors here and there I thought it's a little dark this blue so i added white on top of it to make it a little lighter and look how beautiful and matchy matchy they are same thing with this one i am oh this is the one that i was telling you about that i want to add this tribal colors that i used from the same little village house and look how everything looks let me show you a closer look i love it so much look how much the texture the stenciling the stamping everything you did it does add to your background let's have a quick flip through my projects to show you how it's gonna look like at the end if you use each of these techniques for the first one the light wash of watercolors look how vibrant my focal points are and they pop so well against the light background another project that i also made from watercolors is this little crab look how cute it pops against the light background 
For this other project, the one with transfer over the gel plate, here is an example of it. I did have this stencil of a fishnet that I created using one of the dies. Put the color and then remove the stencil and again transferred it with the paper over the gel plate. For the smooshing technique, I have a lot of projects. I use this technique a lot. Look how beautiful it is. It gives this beautiful texture. And here are examples of the embossing paste. I have a lot of those too. Look how beautiful this is. Just add your stencil, apply the embossing paste, and you get this beautiful texture, raised texture all over your uh, background. Look at this one also. So beautiful. I have two extra techniques that I will tell you about as a bonus to all the techniques that we already went through. So this is um, embossing powder. I go with the embossing ink all over my background and then I use this embossing powder. Could be anyone but this one gives the effect of that looks like a sand. And then you use your heat gun to set the embossing powder. The other bonus technique is using a collage paper. These are just very light papers that are already colored and ready for you to use as a background. Just cut them and add, um, glue them to your background and use your scissors to cut all around it. And then continue as usual. Use your stenciling technique and then your stamping. Look, this is the stamping, the acrylic accents and continue the same way. Look how beautiful these are. Those are the two extra techniques. To recap what we did today, we did uh, six techniques for the first wash, the watercolor background, the gel plate transfer, the smushing technique, and the acrylic wash, and two bonus techniques, the embossing and the collage paper. Then we seen three techniques for stenciling and went on to stamping and how to add acrylic accents. You will find in the description below all the links that for these art journal videos that I created that I showed in this video today. I will also leave links to all the supplies that I used. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when the, I upload part two, where I show a lot of fun different techniques and what they're called to where to place your focal elements properly on your background. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun creating this project with you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Bye.